And that, you know, like I talked about earlier about the great deception that is coming, that is part of the deception of the Anunnaki and Zachariah Sitchin and that they are our creators and that they are our benefactors. They want you to deny Yahweh. They want you to deny Yahushua uh, as Savior Messiah. And so they are setting up the premise. In the Vatican, these Illuminati bloodlines, this Canaanite bloodline, this evil presence in the world, the royal elites, the Jesuits, all those different people are at play, and they're going to bring about this doctrine that is going to say that our space brothers are, in fact, the creators of humanity. Um, and they are going to have many people, many people, deny Christ because they are so confused as to what is truth and what isn't. Um, most people don't stand a chance because the hour is so late and so much time has passed and it takes so much effort and persistence and, uh, and to to push through all of this information and come to discernment in your own way that they know they're going to take a lot of souls with them to hell and that they don't want any of the children of humanity to inherit those seats which they abandoned so long ago. Sharon, I'm going to let you have a turn. <laughs> well, I was wondering, you know, because I, I know what I'm getting out of this book, but I was wondering what are you hoping that people who read your book get from this? Oh, good question. Well, the first thing is because my book pretty much challenges the whole foundational belief systems of most pastors and as far as, Christ, you know, mainstream Christianity, I want people to challenge their own belief systems to not believe all the things that they've been taught and to not be so dead set on certain uh, uncertainty knowing that they understand what is real and what isn't. Um, and to do their own research, to delve into some of these texts and, and, and whatever it is, but to seek knowledge and to find a relationship with their, like I said, their own connecting link to the Creator. Um, in in exploring that and seeking that, I know that the Father will lead you to the Son. And once you come to the realization of both the Father and the Son and what salvation and judgment and this whole, this whole world of duality is really about and where it all began, why we're here right now, how this all began with Eve and her impregnation with Cain, then it begins to make sense. Even the parable of the wheat and the tares. If, if you'll uh, bear with me a moment, I'd, I'd like to read this real quick passage. This is from Matthew chapter 13. Uh, then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And so basically I'm telling everybody that we are at the threshing floor. The harvest is about to be gathered. Uh, the, the wheat and the tares are going to be separated. And that we have this wonderful, blessed, incredible opportunity to accept uh, the graciousness of salvation extended to us by our Father and by the Son and to take part in a world of eternal rest where we no longer have to 
learn through the knowledge of good and evil the entire spectrum of pain and pleasure, but to come to know only the wholesomeness, the goodness, the harmoniousness, the pleasure of life and being as it should have been established prior to the fall. And that is the opportunity that we are being extended in this lifetime, in this generation. And why anybody would not wish to to grasp that and hold on to it and cherish it and uh, and nourish it is just beyond me. Yes. Um, a friend of ours, Lucha, in the chat room just, just asked if you could repeat what Matthew verse you just read. Yeah, that's Matthew chapter 13. It's uh, verse 36 through 43. And if you read, um, I did a, a show not long ago called The Wheat and the Tares, and I explained this whole particular chapter. But in the first few verses, there's like four or five different parables of the garden and where the Lord is talking about the how there's both this evil bloodline and there's this good bloodline and it gives several parables of the garden and how um they ha- are growing up together how they'll be separated and harvest all these different things but at that particular passage that i read this was after he set the multitudes away and he doesn't talk to his apostles in parables He tells them straight out exactly as it is, and it's that that I had just read, where he answered them and said that, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And so basically, the Lord is telling you there um, that, this Canaanite Luciferian bloodline will be banished and abolished at the end of days. Wow. Um, Tim in chat has a question. He wants to know what you think of Reverend Terry Jones and his oh, his burning of the uh, the Koran. It's, yeah, I've seen that on the news. Um, it's supposed to happen on the 11th this month. I think it's unfortunate that they're giving him so much press time. And I think it's unfortunate that that people would do uh, things like that to increase the divisiveness among uh, the, you know, among the peoples of the world. It's, It's my opinion that the Illuminati have used and utilized the ability of divide and rule to control us by, you know, marginalizing us in minorities and then putting these minorities against each other so that they are always at war in petty arguments without ever realizing the bigger picture. And so I always try to to do things which unite us as a people, as a culture, as a as a world uh, in knowledge and empowerment and strength so that we can use and utilize that knowledge for the betterment of all people everywhere and especially to bring people to the knowledge of who their enemy is because it's like if you're going to war unless you know who your enemy is and how their tactics are and the way that they devise and play out their tactics you can't be used in the war you don't even know that there's a war going on and so I'm just trying to wake up the people to the fact that the war is on and that, you know, they're building this prison planet and military martial law type type communist uh, police state systems right up around us. You know, the, the walls are being built with us inside of them. And so, um, I'm just trying to make people aware of where they really are and what's really, really going on. And I always try to do it by bringing people together rather than creating division. Right. Right. Unless you're a care. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, I just muted myself. <laughs> I'm on a roll tonight, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, what, what? Do you have a question, Sharon? No, go ahead. I'm just laughing at you muting yourself. You do it at least. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. It's, yeah, it's my, uh, my, my trademark. What, what, what caused the, the banishment of Lucifer? I mean, okay, we, this is an interesting story, too. All right, um, most people don't know this as well, and I talk about this in my story, but what happened on the second day when the Lord in a loud voice said, let there be light, that light that came into being was the unveiling of the sun, uh, Yahushua Savior Messiah. It was in, and I talk about this in my book because what happened is the Lord created everything in silence and there was a pause of silence for about 30 minutes and everything was left in darkness and the angels in that time were already thinking themselves to be pre-existing beings. But then when they heard that voice that said, let there be light and they saw the unveiling of that light, that light caused everything in the universe to become visible. And it made, it brought everything to manifestation. Well, this was the point where Yahweh had given dominion of the entire universe to his son, the Word, Yahushua Savior Messiah. And it was at that point that Lucifer, he wanted dominion of the universe himself. He was the first created angel. He was a covering cherub of the mercy seat. And they just talked about this in the Gospel of Bartholomew, which I cover in my book. But um, yeah. he wanted dominion of the entire universe. Uh, and that's when he refused to bow down before the Lord. And he challenged his angels to also refuse service to, uh, to Yahushua. And so that's when the Lord, in the book of the Secrets of the Enoch, on the second day, cast him out of the heavens even before the earth had been formed. And he, it says that he was flying in circles over the bottomless. But that was the cause for him to be banished out of the upper heavens. It's because he refused to bow before the sun who had been given dominion of creation. I see. I'm just, your book is so extensive, and the research I can imagine just was so ongoing. How many years did it take you to research this book? Oh, goodness. I think I've been researching it for about 20 years, really. Uh, and that was wow. before I even knew I was researching it. Um, but as far as the actual putting it together in print form, it, it took six years to, to compile it into what it is now. Wow, that's amazing. Labor of love. Can I read a, a, a quick story? Um, yes, it, absolutely. It's from the, this is the kind of stories that I found that were little gems to to let me know that I was on the right path. And this is from the Protoevangelium of James, which is um, the stories of the infancy gospels that were also left out of the, uh, of the Bible. Um, it says. Now it was the sixth month with her, and behold, Joseph came from his building. And he entered into his house and found her great with child. And he smote his face and cast himself down upon the ground on sackcloth and wept bitterly, saying, With what countenance shall I look unto the Lord my God? And what prayer shall I make concerning this maiden? For I received her out of the temple of the Lord my God, a virgin, and have not kept her safe. Who is he that hath ensnared me? Who hath done this evil in mine house and hath defiled the virgin? Is not the story of Adam repeated in me? For as at the hour of his giving thanks, the serpent came and found Eve alone and deceived her, so hath it befallen me also. And Joseph arose from off the sackcloth and called Mary and said unto her, O thou that was cared for by God, why hast thou done this? Thou hast forgot for forgotten the Lord thy God. And basically in the story, Joseph is talking about 
uh, how he had gone. He uh, she was 14 years old when he had taken her as a, a virgin from the temple, and Joseph was an old man. He is he would all, he was already married and had five children, um, but his wife had already passed. He was a, a widow, and so uh, he took her as a wife and then went in to do carpentry in, in, in the, in the land for six months. And when he came back, she was pregnant and he is kicking himself trying to figure out who has impregnated her. And he's saying in this story, is not the story of Adam repeated in me? For as at the hour of his giving thanks, the serpent came and found Eve alone and deceived her. So hath it befallen me also. So what he's thinking is that perhaps the serpent came and impregnated uh, Mary and that the same thing that happened to Adam had again happened to him when in truth we know that she's pregnant by immaculate conception and that she is going to bring forth the child of the Lord but that Eve had truly been impregnated with Cain who was the first one son of the devil. Sharon, I know you've got a question from Chad. I'm going to let you get that in, so I won't keep. Yeah. Talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, person in our chat, Terry, um, wanted to know is um, if that was the case, then why there are millions of planets? Why didn't I'm, I'm assuming he's meaning, meaning Satan make one of them of his own and make his own own people on a different planet? And why did he get thrown down here? All right, first thing, Satan cannot create life. Um, that is only a gift of Yahweh and, and Yahushua, Savior Messiah. He has to manipulate and use um, what is already in place that the Lord has already created. He cannot create life. Uh, and so, and one of the things about this particular planet and this particular world age, this duality, is that all everything is going to unfold here. This is the focus. This is the focus of the entire story, the mythic tale that is creation uh, of the universe. It's all being played out right here. And this world system is a prison planet to Lucifer and his fallen angels. They can't escape here. They can't leave. They are going to be judged here. They have been trying and they have uh, been looking for ways um, to to escape and have wanted to, but they are not going to. Uh, the Lord is going to judge them. This world age is going to end. Salvation has come to bear. Judgment will be called. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Wow. I'm trying to wait through the questions in chat. I know. I, I'm, I'm so not good at this. <laughs> I actually do think we have a, a caller, and Sharon is getting that right now. Um, do you plan on writing another book? Uh, I'm already in process. I'm, um, co-authoring. Yeah, I'm already. I'm co-authoring uh, a, another book with a, a guy on the Locust Army and the return of the Nephilim and all of that. And um, I'm putting out a book of my articles of how I woke up to the New World Order. Uh, from the time of 2005 to 2008, I wrote articles for the Populist Party of America. And, um, and those articles were really instrumental in how I came to be aware of all these different things. And so I'm going to put all that together and, and release it to the people as well. Wow. 